Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about the enumerate built in. Um, and in order to talk about enumerate, we first have to talk about how loops work in Python. So if I have s equals a, b, c, d, and I iterate over it with a for loop, I say for one letter in s, print one letter. So what's actually happening here? Well, the for loop is talking to s. It says, hey, s. Are you iterable? Do you know how to operate inside of a for loop? And S says, oh, yes, I do. And the for loop says, okay, if you do, give me your next thing and your next thing, your next thing. And each next thing that S gives us, that the string gives us, is assigned to one letter, is assigned to that variable. In the case of a string, we get one character at a time from the string. So the first character, A, is assigned to one letter, and we execute the loop body. Then the second one, the third one, the fourth one, then the for loop turns to s and says, give me your next thing, and, well, there's nothing more to give. So we exit from the loop. This is a pretty standard story. And what's missing, and what many people are sort of surprised about, if they come from a background in, say, C or C++ or a similar kind of language, is that we don't have indexes in our loops in Python. We don't need them. In a language like C, you need the index. You iterate over 0, 1, 2, 3 until you get to the end of the thing you're iterating over, string, array, whatever. You need the index because otherwise, how are you going to access the different uh, elements of, say, the string or the array? But in Python, the objects are smart. We turn to the string and say, give me your next thing, your next thing, your next thing, and the string is in charge. The loop is kind of along for the ride. It's the string that's telling us what we're going to get in the next iteration, and the one after that, and the one after that. Okay, what does this have to do with enumerate? Well, there are times when we want to display the, say, indexes of the characters in S along with the characters themselves. So how can I do that? So option one, so use a variable. So I can say here, index equals zero for one letter in S. And I'm going to print index colon one letter, and then I'll increment index, index plus equal one. And if we do this, we get 0, 1, 2, 3. We are actually incrementing one at a time. Now, we're doing this ourselves. We're doing this manually. Basically, we are taking advantage of the fact that for each character in S, we are going to have another iteration of our loop. The loop body will execute once more, and thus we can add one to index with each iteration. So this is the exact opposite of how things work in C. In C, we use the index, the numeric index to get the characters, to get the elements. Here we're using the elements to calculate the index. But whenever there's something that probably happens a lot in Python, then there's probably an easier, shorter way to do it. And that's where enumerate comes in. So option two is to say use enumerate. Now watch what happens here. I'm going to say for one item in enumerate s. And I'm going to say here print one item. And this is where things get a little tricky and a little surprising for people. So how is this loop going to work? Well, the for loop is going to turn to whatever is at the end of the li uh, line here. No longer is s at the end of the line. Now it's enumerate s. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So for turns to the result of calling enumerate s. Well, what is the result of calling enumerate s? Oh, of course, it's an enumerate object. Basically, calling enumerate s gives us a new object of type enumerate. All right, well, what, what does that mean? Well, enumerate objects are there to make automatic exactly what we did here before manually. Enumerate exists so that the object itself will do the calculation of the index. Yeah, but what am I going to get? So if I say for one item in enumerate s, the for loop is going to turn to enumerate s to that object and say, are you iterable? The answer is yes. Give me your next thing. That first one is assigned to one item and we print it. The next thing, next thing, next thing. So what are we going to get? What's going to be printed? And the answer is we are going to get tuples. And notice here, S, the characters of S, are being given to us one at a time, A, B, C, D. But we're also getting indexes. That is to say, enumerate's job is to, for every element in S, return a tuple. So if S gives us A, B, C, D, we're going to get the tuple 0A, and then 1B, and then 2C, and 3D, and until, basically, we exhaust all the elements of S. Yeah, but this is kind of weird, right? So now, if I want to do it this way, what I've got to do is say, like, print white uh, one item zero let's put this in a an f string it's gonna be super ugly colon and then one item one right this will work i do get the right results but yuck my code looks pretty bad well luckily i know that enumerate is always going to return a two element tuple here 
So I can actually use what we call unpacking to grab each of those elements. So I can say here for, I'm going to use two variables for, and we can say here index one letter in enumerate s. And then we get here index and we get here one letter. Now this is only possible because we know absolutely positively guaranteed that enumerate is going to return a two element tuple with each iteration. And sure enough, now it works great. Now, a few more things about enumerate. Well, first of all, I can enumerate on any iterable. So I could say, let's say my list equals 10, 20, 30. I can say for index one item in enumerate of my list. We say print, say here index one item. And sure enough, this worked just fine. So enumerate can be handed absolutely positively any iterable object. So that can be a string, a list, a tuple, a dictionary will get the keys. We could do dictionary items, so it's getting a little complex. You can do a set, you can do a file, and then you'll get the lines numbered from the file one at a time. You can do all sorts of things with it. The point is that if you want the indexes given to you, well, then you can get them given to you by enumerate. The other thing is, let's say I want to show things to my boss. I want to show all the elements of this list to my boss. Already a weird situation. But my boss is going to see this and say, what is this nonsense that you're starting to number things with zero? When I grew up, we started to number things with one. What's with this newfangled computer stuff? First of all, how such a person could be my boss is another question. But basically, sometimes I want to start numbering with a different number. So we can start numbering with one by passing a second optional argument to enumerate. Enumerate my list, comma one. And look at this. Now we start numbering with one. And you can, of course, use any number you want. So I can say start numbering with 9876. I just get that here, 9876. And there we go. And it will always increment one at a time. So again, the purpose of enumerate is to get the indexes based on the elements of an iterable because sometimes you need that. You're usually or often going to use that for display, but it doesn't have to be. You can do whatever you want with it, including calculations. Enumerate can take any iterable, and it returns an iterable with two elements, the index and the current element. And we can always start it at a different starting point, not zero if we pass a second argument to enumerate. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have more questions. As always, I'm happy to hear from you, whether it's email, whether it's Twitter. Don't forget my free weekly Better Developers mailing list, and I'll be back soon with more videos about Python.